Hello, Jane Guthleben. Hello, Richard Moorcroft. Your exhibition is Grander Flora. It's at Edwina Corlett Gallery in Brisbane. And quite a number of the works are uh, very much based around your long-standing fascination with Dutch still life. How did that all begin? Richard, I really love the flower paintings from the 17th century um, um, Dutch still life period. Uh, it was a real boom in still life paintings and um, the Netherlands was so rich that so many people had paintings um, in, in their homes. Uh, and so I became really fascinated with that period. And I wanted to look at those flower paintings in particular and basically make Australian, uh, Australian versions of the same. So those Dutch paintings, those still lives that you refer to back in the 17th century, uh, they had very, very particular, very serious symbols of life and death and all sorts of things built into them, didn't they? Uh, are your paintings that serious? Uh, well, the thing is that Australian flowers, which are so amazing and so very different to those European flowers, um, they don't have the symbolism that European flowers contain. So um, a flower that might relate to virtue or um, uh, uh, love or friendship or um, some, you know, have mm. religious meanings. Mm. Australian flowers don't have that meaning. They, they remain mute, which is really fascinating to me. I'm sure in an indigenous um, there are indigenous meanings attached to Australian flowers that I simply can't unlock. So they have, they're full of secrets that are really fascinating to me. And also they're really beautiful. But you have uh, actually specifically referenced some uh, of the, not only Australian flowers, but even Australian wildlife, particularly birds. Um, let's mention a couple of specific works. There's Dutch still life with lyre birds and their egg. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's also another one uh, in the Dutch still life mode with black cockatoos. How do you decide to incorporate those elements into these quite grand paintings? Yeah, well, uh, the, um, so there, were, there are lots of um, insects and birds and, um, and animals uh, contained in Dutch um, still life paintings. And so I wanted to bring the Australian wildlife into my paintings too. So uh, I will create a um, like a desolate landscape, and so the grand flower piece will sit in a in a in a quite barren landscape, as if it's the only vegetation for um, the birds to come and eat. So it's kind of um, it's quite playful and um, and fun to put birds roosting literally in a big bunch of flowers that you know sit in this landscape. But it's also um, quite an interesting environmental reference uh, in a way to be able to bring in those elements of wildlife. Um, I was going to ask you a, a couple of minutes ago how much are the arrangements real and how much are they imagined but uh, clearly they're substantially imagined because you haven't got black cockatoos in the studio there I presume. No that's right I wish that I did. Um, no they're totally imagined and that does follow what these European painters were doing. Uh, in this in this period, uh, they were showing their skill in and in um, uh, their education in how they arranged the flowers, how many how many blooms they could actually get into a big um, a big arrangement, uh, and also knowing that those blooms didn't um, those flowers didn't bloom at the same time of the year. So it really was a way for the, the painter and the viewer to um, to show their knowledge of um, uh, how their travels um, and how clever they were in being able to identify all the all bits and pieces that made up the arrangement. That sense of, uh, of locality maybe and, uh, and time uh, comes across in, in some of the other works, um, just mentioning three in particular, South Coast Arrangement, Sydney arrangement and even Bass Strait arrangement, which has also got a few other bits and pieces in there. Tell us about those works and, and how, 
how particular are you in terms of the flora that are in those pictures from those locations? Yeah, so when I'm making um, an arrangement like that, it might be inspired by the news, a news item, for example, um, South Coast arrangement I made when the bushfires were on and a lot of the flora was being um, consumed by those dreadful fires. So I researched the flora that was um, around the South Coast region and they have their own version of banksias and um, specific things that, um, that exist in the environment down there. And so I, um, I got them all together in an arrangement which I created on Photoshop and, uh, and so arrange them much as I would if I had the flowers there at my disposal um, and, and created the painting um, in the same way. And going back to the, the Dutch painters, that is exactly what they would have done. They would have waited for those blooms to, to flower and place them in a, a totally imagined arrangement um in much the same way but i'm just using a different type of technology now to to make my my sketch as it were they're very very thoughtful arrangements though from the way in which you describe it and very thoughtful works with layers that are well below the obvious for you where does the balance lie between um these levels of meaning that uh, that carry into the works and their simple aesthetic delight you know they're very beautiful pictures how do you find the balance there oh thank you uh, i well i like to to do th two things so i like to create an arrangement that is um looks good um but also for me uh it's not just a matter of just painting some flowers uh i really like to um to make it region specific and um and that's the fun in it for me so uh, I enjoy that research part, um, and if if people look at the painting and they don't see that, they just enjoy the work. Well, that's great. Um, for me, it's important to to put that that work into it for personal satisfaction, and for anyone who is who who's into a region or into flowers specifically, uh, and they they want to know more, then that's all sort of embedded embedded in the painting. So, yeah, that's. Um, and um, that that's just the way I really like to work. As you mentioned a little earlier uh, with one of those works, the, the South Coast arrangement, an awareness of the bushfire crisis was actually part of the background of that work. Uh, and I noticed that there are a couple of other references to the recent bushfires in um, Volunteer uh, 1 and volu or The Volunteer 1 and Volunteer 2, mm -hmm. quite small works of RFS firefighters but when you look closely you realize that actually they're both standing on like little platforms or plinths yeah. can you tell us what's going on there oh so um i i'm painting them though uh so i i do um ornament portraits i like to call them so they are little um still life ornaments um that are actually a portrait of a of a person of the sort, so, the, the sort of thing that you might find on a mantelpiece a little ornament of some sort or in a display case that is exactly right so uh, I, uh, I have a little ornament of the Queen which I, I like to um, I like to paint um, can shall I get her oh if you've got it handy yes let's have a look and I really like to paint the Queen there she is hello um, and she, right now, um, is, her, is her hand moving? Oh, she's hand. got a wave. That is brilliant. <laughs> yeah, she's got a little solar panel, and um, yeah, so she sits in the window and waves. Anyway, so oh, she. Um, sorry, Jane. I have to. I have to ask. Doesn't she make an appearance in one of the other works? I think it was uh, the Queen and Blue Wrens. So is that actually the uh, the figure yeah. on which that work is based? That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. So. Um, so these are so based on the queen ornament that I have. Um, I've then gone on to paint um, other people's portraits. I've painted self portraits um, as as ornaments. Um, and again, it's a it's a little bit of it's a little bit of fun for me, but keeps my keeps my work in the still life genre, which I 
which I like to play around mm. in. Um, and um, I, it, it's a way for me to extend, extend still life into another, um, into another area. So uh, I painted the, the volunteers um, because at the time that I was preparing for this exhibition, there was just um, the the whole country was going up in flames, and uh, you know, but people in high vis um, firefighters were saving the flora and fauna. So, uh, in a way, they're really important to the exhibition, even though they look like tiny little bookends compared to um, the big flower pieces. There are uh, many other quite small pieces in the exhibition of mm -hmm. perhaps individual flowers in uh, vases. Um, are they, do you regard them as studies for those larger works or are they complete works in themselves or indeed are they both? Uh, yeah, I'd say that they're both. So when, I, when I'm making a big piece, uh, I'm creating it on, Photoshop, as I as I mentioned, the um, doing the research and and placing them uh, using that that Photoshop um, program, and um, but in order to get a sense of the of a work of a flower that I don't have, I'll make a small study. I mean, many artists do this, but I'll make a small study, uh, and I will complete the work. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll make it into a finished piece. Uh, so this show, the, my exhibition at Edwina Collette has got about 40 studies in it and uh, I, I really enjoy them as standalone works, um, so I show them as well. Yeah. I'd like to take you to a, a, another couple of works. Um, one uh, is entitled Things with Stories Attached. Uh, a lovely group of very diverse objects on a surface, uh, a table perhaps, I'm not sure what it is, but mm. things with stories attached. What, what are those things and why are they significant to you? Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, it is, um, there are two of these works in the show. They're like um, never ending plane of things uh, with stories attached. So the they're still life objects from my studio, um, small, small um, bunches of flowers or a or flower bud, a single banksia, um, some pottery, uh, the queen ornament often features um, in, in these paintings. And they're just things that are in my studio and that surround me. Um, I place them onto the floor or onto a really large table and then um, and then paint them. And of course, each one has a story attached to it. Um, it might be a gift. Uh, it might be something from my childhood. Um, mm. uh, um, it's it's the way in which it's the way in which perhaps memories can be embedded in objects and then shared through those objects. That's right. That's, that's exactly right. And. Um, and because a lot of the, the pottery that I paint is um, 19, uh, from my collection of 1950s um, uh, pottery vases and jugs mm -hmm. and things, which have that beautiful, um, those beautiful funny colours of the Australian bush, the minty green and that funny dull pink. And um, uh, so when I include those in paintings, uh, uh, it has a kind of nostalgic, um, aesthetic to it that um, um, not only teams in with the foliage that I'm painting but gives an overall um, yeah nostalgic look that um, that people attach their own stories to uh, which I find um, really interesting. Just finally uh, there's a piece uh, entitled Arrangements Are Up in the Air uh, which yes. is an arrangement which appears to be floating mm -hmm. in mid-air but certainly at this time, life for many people, arrangements are up in the air. Everything is so uncertain. How are you responding to the challenges of the coronavirus? Yeah, well, I have uh, my, my studio is at home. And so everyone is now working from home really close to my studio. 
So while my day-to-day -day isolation as an artist uh, hasn't changed, uh, just outside the door, there's lots of noise going on and people going about their work. <laughs> this is, this so is the family home in action. Yeah, <laughs> so there's... As well. That's right, so there's that. Um, and there is the, um, the, the fact that my exhibition, which I had been preparing six months uh, or more for, uh, didn't get to be seen um, by anyone uh, except the photographer and um, Edwina and Prue uh, at the gallery. So, um, so that was a big, that was a big shame. Um, and that's something that, you know, most artists will be facing uh, for the foreseeable future with the virus. So, yeah, big change in the way of doing things. Well, Edwina, thank you. I'm sorry, not Edwina. Thank you, Jane, for <laughs> um, there we are planted the name in my head. Um, thank you, Jane, for sharing your exhibition with us today. And although nobody has been able to see it physically, hopefully by talking about it today, people will be able to explore it more thoroughly on the website while listening to our conversation. Jane, thank uh, you very much. Thank you, Richard. Lovely talking to you.